Recording live from the Hoban Law Group here in Denver, Colorado, I'm your host, Eric Singular. We're sitting alongside president and founder of the Hoban Law Group, Bob Hoban. Today, we are discussing how can small business owners limit liability during a pandemic, and we are joined by founder and CEO of 101 CBD, Justin Benton. Thank you for being here with us today, Justin. Well, thanks for having me. I'm uh, very honored and glad we can have this discussion when there's lots of questions out there and uh, we can answer some questions and, and calm some nerves and, and look to the future. There certainly are. And before we jump directly into that topic, I want to ask you, how has your day-to-day life been affected in Ventura, California? Uh, what has changed for you as this uh, as the coronavirus has, has impacted your community? Well, I mean, just like everybody, um, you know, all of the, the first, it was the school closings and, and dealing with teaching, you know, your kids at home and, and trying to get in that all thing. And then the work from home thing started. And, and you know, then the, the businesses started closing and, and, and all of that. And so we're all going through that together and just trying to figure out, you know, what is, what's, what's daily life look like? And how is that, how do we make those adjustments in the office? You know, we're, we're open and we're going to continue to stay open. Uh, dispensaries in California, even in San Francisco, where there was a shelter in place um, guidance, they are keeping the cannabis dispensaries open um, because as we all know, it is medicine for so many people. And so we're staying open. Um, you know, we're staying in constant contact Um with our customers, be it through social media, be it through email, uh, be it through face to face. Uh, you know, we're obviously following the CDC guidelines on sanitizing and cleaning all the registers and washing hands and, and doing all the right things that we're supposed to be doing. And, and, you know, our, our customers are have, you know, we have three locations, one in Denver, one in Ohio and one in Westminster out there in Denver. And they're very happy that we're open. And they ask, are you guys going to be open? And we just tell them we're going to stay open as, as long as we can and, and as long as we're needed and in compliance with local uh, and state authorities. And if for whatever reason we can't stay open, just like others in this space, you know, there's other options, whether it's curbside, whether it's delivery. You can even transition an employer to, to a delivery driver. Um, just always kind of thinking ahead um, because – um, from what I've read, there's been a real big um, rush on cannabis products and CBD products uh, as people are kind of hunkering down. So it's just, you know, staying in constant contact with your employees, um, you know, just being honest with them. We're all in this together and, and, and being candid, staying in constant communication with your employees, your, your clients, your, uh, you know, just everybody. So everyone's on the same page and, and we'll get through this thing. You know, we've been through a lot in this country, and um, I'm confident that as long as we keep, you know, looking for the best in humanity and, and working together, we'll get there. Hey, Justin, it's Bob. I, I, I appreciate you taking some time to join us, uh, and, and thanks for that background. As we look at different liability issues that might uh, be more uh, in the front of your mind or in the front of any business owner's mind in this cannabis space, uh, in light of the coronavirus, some things come to mind about insurance for losses as it might relate to uh, liability concerns, product liability, contract liability, workers' compensation and employee-type liabilities. Um, before we dive into each of those, maybe you could talk a little bit about what procedures can you put in place to make sure from a production, manufacturing, bottling, and distribution standpoint that you as a small business owner are putting products out there into the marketplace that are as risk-free as humanly possible? Absolutely. I mean, you're, there's, there are certain procedures out there that, that you can do. The CDC has done a lot of um, a great information on their website. Uh, it, it is, it's, you know, it's very simple things, you know, hand sanitizing after each transaction or cash handling. Um, you know, you know, obviously on the back end of, of manufacturing and production, you're, you're adhering to CGMP guidelines and standard operating procedures and 
you know, the, all the things that you're supposed to be doing anyways with it, the gloves and the hair nets and, and anything else that you would be doing in, in like a restaurant, um, public health type of uh, facility. Uh, you know, for the retail end of things, you know, hourly hand washing, uh, you know, just the basic things that you would be doing to make sure that you stay clean, um, that everything has been um, um, as clean as possible. The biggest thing, too, obviously, is people, if people are sick, you know, they know not to come to work. Um, we, we go one step further, and, and we've seen some guidelines on this, is to make sure that everyone's taking the temperature twice a day. Uh, once in the morning and, and once in the evening, um, just to make sure we know that with this particular um, coronavirus, that uh, there's a temperature rise above 99.5 and it stays steady uh, for at least three days. In fact, there's a smart thermometer out there that's tracking millions of data points in our country, and they're actually able to predict hot spots. So uh, again, the the innovation is here in our country. We're you know that's what we've always been known for as Americans. Uh, you know, first to the moon, and we're going to continue to use intelligence and, and data and uh, AI and whatever we can to get ahead of the curve on this thing and, and make sure we're doing all the right things. Well, you, you've probably seen that San Francisco and New York have both deemed cannabis businesses as essential businesses mm -hmm. uh, during this pandemic, which uh, is is both accurate um, but also, you know, concerning when you have retail outlets such as yourself in a certain respect, uh, when you think about people that are trying to take advantage of the scenario, people that are going out there in, in, in your line of business and your product lines, you know, making high quality CBD or non-psychoactive um, cannabinoid products from industrial hemp, people are out there making claims that, oh, this will cure this or this will suppress viruses or this will kill bacteria. While those things might be true scientifically as it relates to CBD and other cannabinoid products, we've all been aware that some companies have taken more liberty, liberties than they should with making those claims. You probably have seen these claims out there specifically as it relates to CBD. How do you, how do you perceive that? How do you guard yourself against those other companies that are out there saying CBD will, will cure the coronavirus, for example, and those liability concerns? Well, great question. And to follow up with your previous question, too, about, um, you know, insurance, you know, make sure that all of your insurance is up to date. Um, make sure that you're, you know, check in with your insurance agents and, and make sure you're covered. And then check in with, you know, perhaps the world's greatest and, in fact, the world's greatest can of you know, attorney law firm in your, uh, you know, establishment out there in Denver and make sure that you're doing everything right. And that's the same thing I would do with, you know, if you're putting claims out there on the internet. Um, if you do your due diligence and check with, you know, um, someone, uh, an attorney that you trust that has experience um, in the cannabis industry and to have them do it a once over and make sure that you're not crossing uh, any lines and you're dotting I's and crossing T's. So again, just check with the professionals um, and make sure that you're not um, putting yourself in a in a liable situation. And and use good common sense. Um, we all know that CBD has been, you know, just recently um, made, you know, taken off the Controlled Substance Act. And so the FDA is really gray. And, you know, we see positive signs and sometimes negative signs from them. And, you know, they're looking and, and they're the marketing police. So just make sure that you're, you know, you're checking with a professional um, uh, that someone can look through your your claims and make sure that you're not pushing the envelope and um, and that would be my advice is you know work with someone like you guys <laughs> to make sure that everything that you're saying is is you know is, is correct and accurate. Well, that, that's much appreciated and and, and certainly uh, something that we would we would agree on 100 percent. Looking at other forms of liability that are maybe exacerbated or more highlighted in this this time with uh, with this COVID virus, um, what about contract liability? Everybody's got contracts. Every business on earth has contracts of some sort, whether they're supply, service contracts, deliver this on time, do this on time, do this by this date. How do you look at contract liability in this in this uh, this time where sometimes it's not practical or certainly maybe it's impossible to bring products and comply strictly with contracts because of the, the lockdowns, if you will, and the curfews and the fact that business is not what it was even two weeks ago? Well, I mean, I think the first thing you should do is be proactive and, and reach out 
through the, the institutions or the individuals that you have contracts with and, and have a conversation. And, um, you know, more times than not, people are going to understand um, that this is an unprecedented time, uh, perhaps in the world's history, um, uh, that we're all doing the best we can. And, and um, I know that we're doing a lot of creative things with the federal government, and we're still waiting to see what they're going to come out with. And, you know, as far as, you know, taking uh, mortgages and pushing them maybe to the back of the mortgage in three months or, or things like that, they're going to be creative and, and, and come up with some type of contingency plan um, hopefully working together with uh, the person that you're in contract with and, and say, hey, this is the new thing. You know, maybe let's come to together and, and figure out something, whether we put a pause button on this or we renegotiate a new contract. Um, that would be my advice. And again, you know, talking with, um, you know, professionals uh, like yourselves um, to make sure that if there are some speed bumps or some dicey things that you're, making sure that you're covered and, and, and all those good things. But I think overall right now people get it, what's going on. And in some cases there's been extreme success, um, you know, in the cannabis uh, industry uh, specifically um, CBD has been doing pretty well, but I think cannabis, you know, as far as the dispensaries go, um, all my information has been that uh, business has been up, but obviously that could slide. Um, as, as more of us are kind of sheltered in place. When you look at the, uh, the CBD uh, portion of the hemp industry, CBD as an ingredient, CBD as a product, uh, and you look at the supply chain associated with that, obviously this is going to impact the supply chain. We're going to talk at length about what farmers are going to do as it relates to planting hemp this season for harvest at the end of the year to keep that pipeline full. But as you look at the supply chain, from your perspective as a manufacturer and a distributor of products, how do you see this affecting the pipeline, uh, the supply chain? Well, you know, as soon as this started to come down um, and we started getting inklings overseas that this was happening, I mean, the first thing that we did here at 101 CBD was to go out and make sure that we had enough you know, of, all, of everything that we would need for the next six months. So we made sure that all of our products and all of our bottles and labels and everything, marketing materials, basically we just stocked up, um, you know, and we had a, a normal kind of 30 day cycle of refilling and, and, you know, quarterly, but now it was like, okay, you know, cause so many things are, you sometimes you buy things here in America, but they're made overseas whether you know that or not. And, um, you know, we foresaw this coming. The good news is, as far as the product side comes, um, you know, China yesterday, uh, you know, has came out and said that for the first day, they never, they didn't have a new coronavirus test come positive. So there looks like they're kind of out of the woods. And we know that so much, so many products come from China um, as far as the product and the bottles and the, and the droppers and those types of things, you know, we don't sell vapes, but you know, for those that do in the cannabis, obviously so much uh, of the vaping comes from over there. So that supply chain looks good. As far as the farmers, you know, I know you talk extensively of about the next big wave, uh, in hemp and, um, I, it, it feels like we're getting there quicker than maybe some had imagined of going beyond CBD. And I know you've talked extensively about it and have great uh, insight for people to understand all the capabilities of the plant and what we can do with it. And we love, you know, working and collaborating with you and others that are ready for that next, you know, frontier to come, whether it's, you know, the industrial textiles of the plant or the plastics or, you know, the, the farm feed or even the farm installation for like chicken beds and you know, the list goes on and on and seeing those come to fruition as well. Um, you know, we, we're always very encouraging and we work with a lot of local farmers out here in Southern California and, and helping them. And we've had some really good growth out here in California. Very, very positive feedback. Um, not too many people went too big. So we, we, had, a, we had a really nice grow, uh, you know, for our first year um, with hemp. And so... Um, you know, I'm just always going to stay positive and, and, 
and you know obviously don't overextend yourself uh, as a farmer who's growing as far as supply comes but the best thing to do is when you're going to grow a new hemp uh, harvest is to as best you can get it sold before the seed goes in the ground or at the very least have the product sold or, or have some type of tolling um, you know um, transaction in place so it's already basically pretty much sold that might be you know easier said than done but that's really the smartest thing to do is to make sure it's kind of already been um, purchased be- before the seeds actually harvest no, so so as we we talked about China, and China is let's not forget the number one industrial hemp, at least plant producer on planet Earth, and it has been that way for some time now, and a lot of those products never did make it directly into consumer goods for a variety of reasons based on the conditions of growing um, in China. Um, I've been there. We've read enough stories about heavy metals and pesticides in that supply chain. But to your point, sometimes that product comes out of China and gets, quote unquote, cleaned in Europe or other places and then makes its way into the CBD or the the non-psychoactive cannabinoid supply chain. As we look at that supply chain being disrupted significantly, meaning Chinese products are probably they were difficult to get into the United States, period, because of the history as I just mentioned, but now it's going to be even more challenging. So if, as you look at this, what opportunity does that create for the U.S. hemp industry, the U.S. CBD industry, if you will, to capitalize on the fact that Chinese products are probably going to be even more difficult to put into uh, mainstream commerce because of this, let alone if they even get back on their feet anytime soon? How does that create opportunity here? Well, that's the great thing is we have so many farmers um, – that you know planted hemp last season and, and are gonna double down and triple down this year and um, there's plenty of there's plenty of American grown CBD that passed the pesticide and passed the heavy metal test right here in the good US today so we don't need to import any more hemp from China uh, based on CBD um, and and as we expand and, and more acreages, are, are being planted, um, I'm very hopeful um, that we'll be able to sustain just amongst ourselves. And I know there's farmers out there, and I know you've talked about fiber, and there's plenty of farmers out there that are already eyeballing that and seeing that uh, as that opportunity. And, and as the processing plants come in, the the facilities and the infrastructure come in, um, you know, I, 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 I fully am confident that we're going to be self reliant here in the United States. And, and I, just like you said, I mean, we only, you know, use U S grown hemp and everything that we do. And, and, you know, we have the farmers that we grow with and here in Southern California. And, um, I would encourage everyone to, to, to try and buy locally like a farmer's market and support your local economy and support your local community. Um, and, and there's plenty to go around. And, and if you need any help finding, some good hemp you could reach out to us or reach out to bob um there's plenty of inventory here in the united states for all of your cbd cbd needs justin i want to ask you as we think about some of the other applications of hemp uh, there's certainly other cannabinoids as well and we've seen some increased interest in uh, cbg cbn for example and i know you guys are a full spectrum formulator Uh, do you have a forecast on what you see as being kind of the next gold rush on a cannabinoid right now. Oh, we're going to get into the nerd uh, CBD cannabinoid science portion of the call. <laughs> Great. That's me. Uh, so, again, our biggest thing is the whole plant. It's the whole plant. And Dr. Ethan Russo and Dr. Raphael Mishulam, who founded and named CBD back in 1963, have come out with those studies. And we've known that. It, it's the whole plant, everything that goes on in that plant. There's over 500 plant constituents. They work together like a fine symphony. So you don't want to take anything out. Uh, that's, that's our motto. That's their research. That's their finding is, and those cannabinoids are there. There's roughly 113 cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. Um, and they're all great. And so our, our, our advice is always to keep the plant together 
Uh, it's fine for those who want to do research on specific cannabinoids to maybe isolate them like CBG or CBN. We're obviously big in CBDA, the acidic precursors and CBGA. Those are, that's really what we're about. We're not about um, manipulating the plant in any way. All, all of our processes are cold extraction. So as far as the next big thing, you know, I think it's great that people are uh, looking for other parts of the plant. You know, there's a lot more research going into the flavonoids. There's a lot more research going into the terpenes. Um, you know, and I firmly believe in the next couple of years, we're going to be developing plants through genetics that are that are really made for made for us. It's like your own personal plant in your backyard, like tomatoes. But this one tends to be really good for inflammation and pain, or this one tends to be really good for nausea, or really good for anxiety. And by finding out how these cannabinoids work and how they work with our individual bodies and our individual receptors and the terpenes are really the delivery system of them, it's going to be really exciting to see how that all unfolds. CBG is very, um, it seems to be logical that people are into that. Um, you know, there's still some more testing. We've, we've grown some plants out here. Um, my personal experience with CBG is it seems to be more focus related. So maybe if someone who was, you know, was kind of, you know, uh, a little hyperactive or just kind of maybe a little overwhelmed or has a big study, a big test to study for, CBG might be something for them. That's been my experience. CBG seems to well, be, it, go ahead. No, I was going to say, Justin, uh, so when you talk about CBG, yeah. um, what I've been told by many people is the, the beauty, if you will, of CBG is that you can take it and if you have the right laboratory setting, you can modify, and I, I'm a lawyer talking about what a lab setting means, so it, it, it's, it's not as informed as it should be, but CBG can be turned into other cannabinoids, including but not limited to THC, CBD, so forth and so on. So the idea, as I understand it in a lot of respects behind creating and storing and wholesaling CBG products, is that you can ship that product so long as it's in a in a in a in a condition that can be um, preserved and doesn't spoil, and then turn that CBG into any cannabinoid you want in the future, uh, depending on what the market dictates and what the market requires. So that's my lawyerly understanding of what you can do with CBG. What's your reaction to that? Well, good good question. The the point is, is CBG is the mother cannabinoid. So as the little seedling pops out of the ground. It's all CBG in there, and it's technically CBGA because it's in its acidic precursor state. So as it grows based on genetics, yes, it's going to turn into predominantly a CBD strain, which we know is hemp as long as it's less than 0.3 THC, or veer to the right and become a high cannabis THC strain. And so, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of us, of, of, of American ingenuity and, and, in, and the world, too. Uh, Israel's doing some great research, is if we can find things that and, and, and continue to turn that, that mother cannabinoid into particular cannabinoids, that's fantastic. And, and but again, for us, we're more interested in the whole plant. Specific cannabinoids are great, but when you take that specific cannabinoid with 112 of its, you know, cousins, along with the flavonoids and the terpenes and, the, you know, all the amino acids and fatty um you know, omega threes and sixes. That's really the magic of the plant, the, the miracle of the plant, if you will. So that's that's our perspective, where we're holistic here. Um, but I know some people like to be very specific, and they like dosing, and they like milligrams, and they they like to go that way. Especially scientists and researchers, uh, and, and obviously more of the pharmaceutical mo uh, model, which is great. And I I'm, I applaud anybody. You know, cannabinoid medicine. If you're using cannabinoids. I'm a fan of all of them, all 113. Well, obviously your passion comes through here, and, and that's, uh, that's much appreciated, and, and, and that's why we enjoy talking with you and working with you so much. We're, we're about to, to run short on time here, but I really wanted to focus on one last thing before we wrap this up, and that is access. So whether you call people that use your products or similar products, patients or customers or um, just, just friends, how do they continue to access this product and what impact will this have on pricing given the shutdowns, the lockdowns, the curfews, et cetera? What's well, your perspective on that? 
Yeah, well, again, it, it's we got to just kind of stay up to up to speed with our what our local um, government and, and state government is telling us uh, as far as you know whether it's closures or shelters in place for businesses and, and things like that. Um, you know, one kind of comical note is for those that watch Seinfeld, they're used to you know like Newman uh, would say, nobody can stop the mail. So just you know, remember as long as you know we'll adapt. And whether it's curbside delivery, uh, whether it's delivery, um, you know, we, we work with some local delivery uh, companies out here that, 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 you know, will take our products door to door. Uh, the United States Post Office, you know, uh, you know, like I said with Newman, that's always an option for us and for others, um, you know, going to the, to the website. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of dispensaries obviously have websites. If not, there's the lead maps and the lead leads of the world. Um, you know, reach out to them and, and see what, how things are going with them. I know I've seen a lot of emails from, from CBD companies and, and basically anybody I've given my email to in the last five years, everyone's telling me their policy. So, but, uh, you know, it's just, uh, just stay in contact and, and it's the owners in, in this space. Um, you know, I think there will probably be some deals, um, some prices will drop. I know we've run some specials just to kind of make sure people, while we know they can still get it, get it, um, and, and discount where we can to make sure that they have enough to feel comfortable. Um, because in this, this new time that we're in right now, um, for so many people, we know the benefits of cannabis, um, and, and some of the benefits for so many people, you know, they experience, you know, pain is obviously a big one, but certainly anxiety and sleep. And so if it helps with those things, especially sleep and anxiety in these times, sleep is the most important thing for our bodies to, naturally heal themselves and and obviously when there's an uneasy uncertain time anxiety is a great thing too so we're going to do everything we can i know everyone else is out there you know and i really am, am comforted and I, I look forward to seeing how we all kind of pull together uh, especially in this community um, it is such an amazing community as so many of us are in here uh, really got here for the right reasons and to help others and serve others and help clients and, and as long as we stay focused on that uh, we're going to pull through this thing better than ever and uh, look back and, and, uh, and, and know we did it together. Well, as we all weather this storm together, we really appreciate you coming and sharing your perspective with us, Justin. It's very valuable to hear from a small business owner and honestly exciting to hear about all the potential and, and f further opportunities with uh, hemp and cannabis and and there's certainly a lot to look forward to on the other side of all of this. So thank you for being here with us today, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, but you bet. Thank you both, and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see each other soon down the road. Yes, sir. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hoban Minutes special series on coronavirus and cannabis. You can head on over to hoban.law for more information on this podcast or the Hoban Law Group. If you have any ideas for subjects that we should be covering or any questions you want to pose to, to Bob or myself, shoot us an email at media at hoban.law. Stay tuned for the next episode on this special series, Coronavirus and Cannabis.